What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with the man, Matt Antonelli. Antonelli Baseball on YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. First round draft pick, my teammate in pro baseball. We made a video about two years ago. It was called Hands Routine. Yep. And you broke it down so well. The video was so well received. And I kind of want you to touch on that, uh, add some more information to that. Yep. And then you got a little more uh, great stuff towards the end of this video sure. that you guys are really going to love. So let's talk about it, fielding. We're going to talk about a diff couple different gloves. Yep. Uh, Matt's got on the pancake glove right here, available at yougoprobaseball.com, link down below. But let's, let's go through it. What do you got sure. for us? So I think the, the first thing when it comes to hand routines is that it looks, it will look simple, right? So we're, we're working on a lot of on the knee stuff, a lot of rolled balls. Every team I played for, every, every team, I played for five different organizations, we all had our own hands routine. Sometimes kids will see a hand routine going on and they say, oh, that looks really easy, right? Like uh, the, the young kids should be doing that. In order to improve your fielding, and there's a lot of details, we'll talk about them today, a lot of details. You can't expect to just go into the game, have somebody rip a ball down your throat and think that they're magically just gonna appear, right? This is where you build them. So don't just do the drills, but do them perfectly. And as a coach, coach every little thing. We'll talk about what the coach, but what happens with hands routines, sometimes either kids don't do them or they'll be doing them at a practice and no one's watching and they're just kind of like busy work, right? As a coach, you want to coach it. As a player, when you're doing it, I'm thinking, okay, this, this round I'm going to, uh, whatever it is, I'm going to make sure that I keep my chest forward. I'm going to keep my hands out. We'll talk about that, but that's really, really important. The first thing off. Um, let's talk about some of these gloves really quickly because I think this is really important. When I'm doing a hands routine or anytime when I'm fielding a ball, I need to work on a few things. One, it's catching the ball in the same point of the glove every single time. Why is that important? Because it isn't just important to field the ball. There's three steps to fielding. I've got to field the ball, I've got to transfer the ball, I've got to throw the ball. So I could be really good at fielding and throwing, but if I can't transfer, that's going to lead to more throwing errors. So how do you do that? You get the, the ball on the same point of the glove every time, and every drill you do, you work on transferring. There's a lot of drills I see players that just catch the ball, and that's it. That's great. You can work on that a little bit, but I've got to work on catching the ball, transferring the ball, and then getting ready to throw the ball, or throwing the ball. Right? In the hands routine, it's mostly just field and transfer. All right, so really important. Um, why these gloves are important, so this is the pancake glove. You can't close this glove all the way. And so when I'm fielding a ball, I'm never going to close the glove if I'm fielding it within the framework of my body. Inside the framework of my body, it's two hands. It's one hand here. I'll show you real quick. So what a lot of kids are taught also is to be, you know, we, you probably remember it, the alligator back when you're younger, right? So it's, it's a glove hand on the bottom, this hand on top. Uh, what happens with this is when you do this, is that when you tr go to bring the ball to the middle, your elbows are in, so you end up hitting your stomach and you can't have soft hands, you have bricks for hands. So the way we teach it isn't like this, it's off center. So it's almost at like a 45 degree angle with each hand. And what that does is when I go here, my elbows go from in here to out here. So when I'm out, now I can bring the ball right to my middle, right here. So that's really, really important. Um, why is it important to be here? and have this hand just off the glove is because we said, we're never gonna catch it one hand in the framework of our body. So why are these gloves really, why do they work? Because you can't close it. So whether you have this one on or you have this one on, now this one you can close a little bit more, right? So it's not exactly like a pancake. It is a pancake, but you can't close it all the way, right? So I still gotta work on having that control hand right here. You wanna roll me a couple yep. just nice and easy? So um, real quick, when you're doing this, you can do it from your knees or you can do it in a fielding position, right? So either one, I'll go on my knees for the first one. So if you go on your knees, before you roll it real quick, feel like your chest is forward and my hands are out front and I'm at that 45 degree angle, all right? Go ahead, see if you can roll one right at me. All right, so when I field this ball, I don't catch it with one hand. It's a huge issue I see with young players. They just try to catch the ball with one hand. All right, so I'm here, I'm out front, and I'm right, the glove never closed. I have that 45, I trap the ball, and now I bring the ball to the middle. All right, so that's, that's really important. You can do that on your knees. I'll do one standing up. So 
same thing. I'm, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get slightly wider with my feet. I'm going to get my chest forward. My butt's going to come up. I'm not going to go down. So what a lot of, I, again, one thing I hear a lot with young fielders is they'll say, you know, get your butt down, right? Get your butt down. But when I get my butt down, my chest is here and my arms can't reach the ground, right? So if I get my chest forward, my back flat, my butt comes up. Now look at my hands are on the ground, right? Got to roll me one. So I'm here. And now I can take it from that 45, I'm working on my transfer, I'm bringing the ball right up to here. And when I have that ball in my hand, I get it right into a four seam grip. So I'm not just smothering it and that's it. As I'm bringing the ball to the middle, I'm getting the ball into my hand. So I'm here, here comes the ball, I get it here and then as I'm coming up, I've got it in my throwing hand and I've got my four seam grip. And you've got to work on that. It doesn't happen by accident. I've got to work on this deflection right here, right? We talked earlier about getting the ball in the same point of the glove every time. If one time I catch the ball here, and one time I catch the ball here, and then I catch the ball here, there's no way that ball is going to pop into my hand the way it should. And so what leads to throwing errors? When this ball, I'll try to do a bad one. So when this ball, get roll me one, when this ball hits I completely missed it, right? Because I was trying to get the ball off a different part of the glove. Can you roll me one more? I'm gonna do it again. So if I get the ball like that, right? So I just got the ball off the side of my hand and I wasn't trying to do that, but the ball came up into this hand way on my pinky, my middle finger and my ring finger, right? And so imagine this happens to you. Now you've got to get ready to throw. While you're getting ready to throw, in your mind you're saying, I have a really bad grip, I can't throw the ball like this. So I'm trying to quickly get my hands to the right spot. Well now I'm going to be rushing. I'm rushing with this, my feet might not be ready yet. Now my feet are ready to throw, but I still don't have a good grip, and the ball sails over there. The whole reason why it happened is because I didn't get the ball off this part right here. So we talk about index finger, right there, and it's going to be below the fingers, right? So. When I, when I get that ball, I don't want it up into the fingers of the glove. So if I was gonna catch the ball here, right, if you're just gonna throw me the ball, it'd be below the fingers. When I turn the glove over like this, now you can just think about it above the fingers. So below the fingers when I'm catching a ball here, below, or uh, below the fingers here, above the fingers here. Roll me one more, let me get it right off the good spot by the glove. So right there, when it came in, it came right to that point right there. And now I bring the ball to the middle and I got my four seam grip. And if I do that every time, I will throw the ball much better across the infield. Okay, so that's one thing. You can do that from your knees, you can do it standing up. We talked about some of that stuff last time. Super important still. We start every single day off doing that. Um, now, let's throw on another glove real quick. That's let's put the 975. Nine, yep. So we, we can do this, we also have the this one's uh, eight, eight inch. inch yep. yep. So let's just go nine seven five for That's right. the one you were using in the video that we did before. Last time. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. So, one thing I want to show now is once you've done that, right? You've gone from the knees. You've worked on bringing the ball to the middle. You can do it backhand. You can do it forehand. One thing, real quick. If you're going to go outside the framework of your body, so you're going to go outside your shoulders, it should always be one hand now. So don't go get with two hands, I just go one hand and when I field that ball, I bring the ball to the middle. I take my thumb and I bring it to my other thumb. If it's this way, I field the ball, I come to the middle, I bring my thumb right to my other thumb and I transfer the ball. Always bring the ball, no matter where you catch it, bring it to the middle, okay? So you can do that again on the knees, you can do it standing up. Now, one thing that we take a step further is we talked about how it's not just about fielding and transferring, but it's about throwing. So you can start off doing this, just fielding and transferring, and then you can throw it. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna get into our fielding position, but we're gonna go up onto our front heel like this. Why is that important? Because when I'm going to throw the ball, I wanna time it up. I wanna be able to move through the ball. So I get my momentum and direction going to first base or wherever I'm throwing. And so this is great to work on fielding and transferring, but now let's work on transitioning into the throw. So the timing of it has to be when my foot, my toes come down into the ground, I'm moving towards where I'm gonna throw, right? So some players get flat footed and you say, man, they won't get through the ball. If that foot's completely stuck on the ground and I feel it here, now it's a little bit harder to get going. But if I've got my toe up, once I put it down, 
I transfer everything towards first base. So let's do a couple like that. So you can do a backhand, you can do a forehand, you can do it straight on. We'll go straight on for right now. So I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna put my heel on the ground, my toe up. I'm gonna be right here. As the ball comes in, when I feel that thing, I'm going to try to time it up again with my foot hitting the ground as I feel it. I'm gonna scooch over just a little bit so I can kind of throw one over there and I'll try to keep it not super fast so everyone can see. So I'm here, ball comes in, boom. I hit the ball, I hit the ground with my toe, I bring the ball to the middle, I set up. So you can do those first, I'll throw this one. So I'm here, here comes the ball, I put my foot down and I throw it. So let's see how it gets me moving towards my target. So the timing again is foot hits the ground as I catch the ball. I'll do it one more time so you can see the timing. So I'm here. So that sound should be exactly at the same time. And so if you're doing that, you can practice just a couple static ones first, and then we'll do one more throw. So I'll be here. And so I'm bringing it here, hitting my toe, throwing the first. So real simple stuff. That might look really easy, but it is not really easy. And I don't know how many ground balls I fielded in my life. A million maybe at this point. Um, that stuff isn't just gonna happen by saying, you know, players out there and say, hey, let's get the timing going right there with your left foot. Good luck, right? You have to build it up. Hands routine, working on it in really confined spaces as you get better, transition to rolled balls like we did, maybe a little further back, some fungos, and then eventually it'll happen in the game. Well, obviously this worked well for you when we played together in pro baseball. I was a pitcher. Some, some of those balls I threw, they smoked. I'm like, man, that's a base hit. I turn around and Matt's snagging them. I'm like, how the heck is this guy doing it? So whatever you're doing is working. Obviously, Matt's a fan of training gloves. He doesn't, uh, he used this one in the, yep. the last video. I'm gonna send him home with this so we can uh, tra transition him into a Valley guy. I love it. All these Valley gloves are available on yougoprobaseball.com, link down below. Um, don't forget to watch that old video. I'll leave the link down below. I think we called it Hands Routine by Matt yep. Antonelli or something mm -hmm. like that. I'll leave that link down below. Go subscribe to Matt's channel, Antonelli Baseball on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's going to travel about 90 feet in a half a second. When I catch when my left foot lands, I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. When I take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again. It's about fielding the ball properly every single time. If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait to field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.